China's GDP recorded its slowest growth rate in the first quarter of this year since the aftermath of the global financial crisis in 2009. GDP growth fell to 7% in the first quarter from 7.3% in the previous quarter. The FT's editor, Lionel Barber, recently interviewed Li Keqiang, the Chinese premier, and asked him about the pressures that Beijing is under. Lionel, welcome. How did Mr. Li talk about growth and the challenges that China has to uh, keep growth going this year? Well, Mr. Li was very clear and forthright that the Chinese economy definitely faces downward pressure. And he also said that it would be difficult to reach the target of 7% growth, uh, annual growth. He said it would require, in his words, perseverance, vision and courage. However, uh, as is often the case with senior Chinese officials, they reckon they've got the tools to do the job. Uh, and Mr. Uh, Li uh, was very clear that he thought that would happen this year. One of the big challenges China faces is in fixed asset investment. And in the first quarter, fixed asset investment grew at just 13.5%, lower than all of the levels that it, it dropped to during the financial crisis. How is this impacting on the real estate market in China and what does Mr. Li plan to do to resuscitate demand in the very important property sector? Well, here I thought the Prime Minister was quite interesting because he admitted there were certain contradictions or conflict, in his words, between the goal of providing necessary housing for all those hundreds of thousands of people coming from the land into the big cities and that affordable housing was very important, but also he did raise uh, the specter of a property bubble. And I think anybody who spends any time in China knows that there is considerable upward pressure in, in the real estate market. Trade has also been a very weak point. Uh, we saw exports decline 15% uh, year on year. Does this put pressure on China to devalue the renminbi? And uh, what was the feeling about that topic? Again, Premier Li did not flinch from answering the question. Quite interesting, James, that this was an unscripted performance. Uh, here you had a senior Chinese official uh, who knew the subjects but not the precise questions, capable of improvisation. Now, he stuck to the line that his predecessors have supported, which is, we don't want to force devaluation. And he also said he didn't want to get, encourage others or follow others into a, a, what could be a currency war. Uh, however, he did not rule out completely the notion of a weaker RMB uh, if necessary, if things were going down. Interesting. And the, uh, one of the other uh, pressures that China is facing at the moment is, of course, in uh, deflation or deflationary pressures. Consumer prices are still positive, but producer prices have been negative for a long time and they're still going south. So what does Premier Li plan or what did he say he was thinking about when it comes to addressing the issue of, of falling prices in China? Well, you sometimes wonder when you're talking to uh, the Premier or to other senior Chinese officials whether they believe that there is a tiger in the tank, if you like, or whether they have a tiger by the tail. Uh, are they really capable of delivering on these promises to hit 7%, uh, maintain a, you know, an orientation towards a greener economy. And I think here, on the deflationary side, Mr. Lee was a little bit, uh, shall we say, enigmatic, because he said, we are on the receiving end of deflation. We see the end of, if you like, the commodity super cycle, but we don't have deflation in China. So work that one out. <laughs> Thank you. Good to see you, James.